Joining us now, Democratic member of the Armed Services and Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Tim Kaine of Virginia. And, Senator, we got a lot of questions for you. It's great to see you this great. morning. We'll start with Good to be Iran. With you, Mika. Thank you. You and 26 of your colleagues signed a letter to President Biden urging him to rejoin the Iran nuclear agreement. It reads in part, while the damage of the last four years has left our country facing numerous challenges across the globe, there is no question that one of your early pressing national security priorities should be to return the joint return to the joint comprehensive plan of action to address the threat of Iran's nuclear program. As such, we are encouraged that indirect talks are underway in Vienna aimed at reviving the nuclear agreement. It seems, Senator Tim Kaine, there's a lot to undo from the past four years. What makes this the very top priority? Um, Mika, the, the fact that the talks are going on is very helpful because President Trump's decision to blow up diplomacy has made the region less safe, has hurt our relationships with our allies, and even made our relationships with adversaries like Russia and China uh, more difficult because they were part of the deal that we negotiated. Iran was complying with the deal by all estimation. President Trump's own national security team, Secretaries Tillerson and Mattis, says we should stay in, but the president made us less safe by pulling out. We need to go back into the deal so that we don't see Iran doing things like enriching past the limits that the U.S. basically told them, you don't need to comply with these anymore when the U.S. backed out of the deal. We should go back into the deal, hopefully get Iran to comply again with the limitations we would undertake to carry out our responsibilities, and then we need to focus on other instances of Iranian misbehavior, uh, U.S. hostages in Iran, their bellicose activities in Yemen and elsewhere, but we should do it mm. with their nuclear program under both constraints and an inspection regime that will let us know what they're doing so we can protect our regional allies. Senator Kane, let's move west one country to Iraq. We're going to hear this morning or sometime today from President Biden that on the 20th anniversary before that date of September 11th, all troops will be coming home from Afghanistan. What's your reaction? Is that the right call? Um, Willie, the White House called me about six to eight weeks ago, and this is exactly what I recommended that they do. I know they were getting recommendations from many, many people, and none of the choices were easy, but I think it's the right call for two reasons. The U.S. military has done what it can in 20 years. For 10 years, we degraded al-Qaeda and eventually killed bin Laden, and in the 10 years since, we've now trained nearly half a million Afghan army and police so that they can assume responsibility for the security of their own country. 20 years, we've done what we can. The Afghans have to shoulder that burden. With the assistance of the U.S. as a partner on diplomacy and humanitarian aid and development, but the U.S. military has done what it can, and 21 years or 25 or 30 is not going to appreciably change the situation. The second reason it's the right thing to do is we have to focus. In the cruelty of life, you sometimes have to say, what are the top priorities? And right now, the U.S.'s top security challenge is working with allies to curb aggression from China and Russia, and in my view, promoting prosperity and stability in the Americas. Those are our two top challenges now. The Middle East is no longer the top area of strategic, you know, engagement and challenge for the United States. It's the Indo-Pacific and the Americas. Joe Biden wants to turn our attention and focus on what we need to do in 2021 and beyond. As you know, the objective when the United States and allies first went 20 years ago to Afghanistan was to destroy it as a safe haven for terrorists to organize and launch further attacks. Do you worry that by leaving, we now leave ourselves open and that it just kind of reconstitutes itself and goes back to what it was 20 years ago? We're going to continue to have to work in tandem with the Afghan governor, government, again, in diplomacy and humanitarian aid and development um, to make sure that that doesn't happen. But we can't want stability for Afghanistan more than the Afghans do. Um, and we have invested heavily over 20 years with a military involvement, thousands dead, tens of thousands injured. It's time to refocus our attention on the areas that in 2021 are the, are the areas of most strategic strategic importance to the U.S. military. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place.
Download the NBC News app today.